In this second segment, we will continue our discussion of the confidence interval of a proportion. Let's cover some confidence interval terminology. The MOE, or margin of error, represents the distance from the parameter estimate, here 0.56, to the lower or upper end of the confidence interval. We refer to the number at the lower end of the interval, here 0.39, as the lower confidence limit. The number at the upper end of the interval, here 0.71, is called the upper confidence limit. When we use the phrase confidence limits, this refers to the endpoints of the interval. When we talk about the confidence interval, we are talking about the range of the values. So far we have restricted our discussion to a confidence level of 95%. Although this is the most common confidence level generally used in clinical research, there is nothing special about 95%. Other common confidence levels used in research are 90% and 99%. The method we have used to calculate the confidence interval in this example is called the modified Wald or the agresti cool method. As it turns out, there are a multitude of methods for calculating the 95% confidence interval for a proportion, and there is no consensus within the statistical community about which approach is best. We have used the modified Wald approach to be consistent with the presentation in our textbook. We agree with the author that the modified Wald is accurate and a good choice to use in all circumstances. As Motulski points out, many textbooks present the standard Wald method because of the simplicity of the equation associated with it. However, in a variety of circumstances, the standard Wald does not work well. This is an advanced topic and for the purposes of this course we don't need to worry much about this issue. Our statistical software, StatCrunch, can compute both the modified Wald and standard Wald confidence intervals. This will be demonstrated in the StatCrunch section of the module. In a later module, after covering some additional material, we will briefly return to this topic and talk more about the formulas for the standard and modified Wald methods. For now, let's focus on some key points. The width of the confidence interval is determined by the margin of error. The margin of error is a function of the desired confidence level, say 95%, the number of successes in your sample, 19 infants born at 24 weeks gestational age who survived to 6 months, the total sample size, this is equal to the number of successes plus the number of failures which is a total of 34 infants. Once the MOE is calculated, the interval is formed by subtracting and adding the MOE from the sample estimate. I mentioned that there was nothing special about using a 95% confidence level. Here are the 90% and 99% confidence intervals for the survival proportion at 24 weeks gestation. To increase the confidence and be more certain that the interval contains the population proportion, the interval must be made wider. If we can tolerate lower confidence that the interval contains the parameter, the interval becomes more narrow. Another important factor I mentioned is the impact of total sample size on the interval width. Keeping the sample survival proportion fixed at approximately 0.56, increasing the overall sample size will result in successively more narrow confidence intervals. When it comes to statistics, there are always assumptions to consider. The validity of a statistical procedure is dependent on how closely the assumptions underlying the procedure are met. For a, the confidence interval of a proportion, there are several key assumptions that need to be evaluated. 1. The sample is random or at least representative of the population under study. In the Hopkins example, this would be violated if infants included in the sample were less or more sick than other premature infants of similar age. 2. The subjects in the sample are selected from the same population and each subject has been selected for inclusion in the sample independently from any other subject in the sample. In the Hopkins example, this would be violated if some of the infants were twins or if some of the infant deaths were attributable to a hospital infection. 3. 
the sample data being analyzed is accurate. In the Hopkins example, this would be violated if some of the outcomes were simply incorrectly recorded in the database. Returning to the results from the Hopkins study, we've now added an additional column with the modified walled 95% confidence intervals for each gestational age. Focusing on the 24-week results, the confidence interval ranges from 0.39 to 0.71. What is the correct syntax to express a confidence interval? A simple presentation is to state the sample proportion and then in parentheses provide both the numerator and denominator of the sample proportion along with the confidence interval expressed in the form of LCL to UCL. This provides the reader with all of the relevant information about the sample proportion and its confidence interval. You will encounter a variety of alternative presentations of confidence intervals in the literature and it's always a good idea to check a journal's statistical presentation guidelines prior to submitting an article to determine the preferred method of presentation. A correct statement interpreting this interval would be the following. We are 95% confident that the true six-month survival population proportion for infants born at 24 weeks gestational age is contained in the interval from 0.39 to 0.71. This concludes segment two of two of our discussion of the confidence interval for a proportion.